Fortunately, Randy's mother used spanking through 10th grade so he has been much better behaved than most. Oh, I see. So he's used to being punished this way. Yes, he is. Susan, which makes it a lot easier around here on nights like tonight. If he didn't have a traditional upbringing, Randy probably never would have agreed to stay on here after I insisted on a new arrangement. Randy was beside himself with embarrassment and asked once more if he could be excused. Once again, he was rebuffed and the two women went on talking about him as if he wasn't present. Aunt Carolyn continued. The hardest thing for Randy to get used to so far is being spanked in front of Davy. How is that, Carolyn, Mrs. Symington asked. Well, Susan, on spanking nights when I have two naughty boys on my hands, I always spank them together so each child witnesses the other's punishment. That way, they learn what happens to bad boys in my home firsthand and from watching. A child who has to wait while his friend gets paddled right in front of him and who knows he is next is a lot more anxious by the time he goes over my knee. I keep track of who went first the last time so I can reverse the order. It's also more embarrassing for each of them to have a friend see his spankings. For that reason, I always bring both boys into the den when just one of them needs a spanking. A little embarrassment goes a lot way. Remember last summer when I spanked Davy in your parlour after he broke that dish? Yes, of course, Carolyn, how could I forget? Davy's face was as red at the beginning as his bottom was at the end. Do Randy and Davy need to spank together very often? No, not more than once a week, Susan, though it depends. Last week, they earned two spankings together. My goodness, it's already eight o'clock. The grandfather clock had begun chiming and both women looked at their watches. Why so it is, Carolyn. Is that a special time? It is on a spanking night, Susan, because it's when I put any naughty boys to bed after giving them a good paddling. Do you mind waiting here while I take care of something in the den which has been waiting all day? Not at all, Carolyn. I can read today's paper right here. Don't bother about me. Aunt Carolyn, please, not now with Mrs. Symington here, please, can't you wait? Shush child. You knew Mrs. Symington was coming for dinner all week, didn't you? Yes, I suppose so. You suppose so. I told you three or four times earlier in the week. If you didn't want to be in this situation, all you had to do was behave properly yesterday. I didn't go to a party when I was supposed to go to the library and study, did I? No, who snuck out to a party and then lied about it, young man. I did, Randy whispered, his face growing very worried. That's right, you did, young man. You were the one who went to a party on a weeknight and then lied about it. What happens to boys who lie in my house, Randy? That get, P.U., punished, Randy whispered again this time even more faintly. I can't hear you, young man. They get punished, he repeated in a slightly louder whisper. That's right, they get punished. If you give me even the slightest bit of trouble right now, I won't bother to take you into the den. We can just take care of your punishment right out here in the parlour. I'm sure we wouldn't want that, would we, young man? Randy said nothing, his face a mask of misery and shame. Already tears were welling up mysteriously in his eyes despite his attempts to fight them back. 